Okay, so for today data communication class, we will finish um, the flow and error control for the uh, synchronous CDM, and then we will go to the multiple channel access. Okay, then we will go to chapter eight, which is the um, which is a wireless area network. Okay, now for the flow and error control for synchronous CDM, remember that. When you do the synchronous CDM, you just move uh, the the um, the transmitter and the receiver at the same speed, right? So there is no no overhead at all. There's no header. You just look at the time, okay? That this time belong to which user, and then you know that um, this is how you share the medium. So how do you control the flow, okay? And the errors for the flow, since you go at the same speed. You don't need to control the flow, right? Because you decide, you decide the receiver so that it has the same speed of transmitting as the transmitter. Okay, so no problem with the flow control. How about the error control? For the error control, you can, since um, we talked about last time that um, we can have multimedia, right, in, in, the, in the same frame. Channel one may send an image, channel two may send um, Voice, channel three may send file, data file, okay? So some of them may need error control, some of them may not need error control, depend on the users. So we should um, let the user decide whether it will use the data, uh, the error control or not. Okay, so if we look at the frame, and suppose this channel three send data, Okay, send data. Okay, maybe this one send voice, this one may send voice. Okay, so no error control for these channels, but channel 3 send data, so it needs um, error control. Okay, what it can do is that it can have um, other protocol, for example, okay, so this is user number 3. Okay, user number three may use HDLC frame format, okay, HDLC protocol. So you will have flag and address, okay, address, and um, control, and then information, and then FCS, and then flag, okay. Then what you do is that you send, like the first, the first byte you send in the first frame, right? And then suppose address use eight bit two, you send to the second frame. Okay, let's say control use sixteen bit. It will have half of it into this frame and half into another frame, right? So um, in terms of the TDM frame, this is a TDM frame. Number one, number two, number three. In terms of TDM, it doesn't care what is in the what is in the, where, where the data in the frame come from? The data in the frame may come from voice, may come from image, may come from um, like a file, okay? So, so this one just sent, the TDM just sent. However, in terms of user, user can decide what to send in each of the slot, okay? In the slot that, that is this assigned for. So if this one use flag, address, control, at the other end, at the receiver, when it received this data, it can reconstruct the HDL, um, HDLC frame, right? So when it get the HDLC frame, then it can do the um, error control use FCS here, right? It can use the frame check sequence to check whether it received correctly or not. So the error control is done in a per channel basis, okay? So channel three one error control, channel three will just use error control. Either channel doesn't want error control, that's the channel doesn't have to use error control. Okay, you understand? Okay. Now, so, so that's all for the um, TDM. The next topic is multiple channel access, okay? In this case, um, we want to share um, Okay. It's a technique we want to share for multiple transmitter, multiple receiver stations, okay? 
this is what we call FDMA and TDMA, which is diff okay, FDMA and TDMA. And what, what are the difference? It's different from the FDM and TDM because there is no use of physical multiplexer. So if there is no multiplexer that move like this, okay, in the TDMA and FDMA, this, there's no, okay, this one you have a multiplexer, right? FDM and TDM, you have a multiplexer. But in FDMA and TDMA, there is no, no multiplexer. So if it is um, the frequency division multiple axis, okay, is station is assigned a frequency band. So different stations have different frequency band. If it's time division multiple axis, is station is assigned a sequence of time slot, okay, so and then it can transmit directly on the channel. There are also other access like um, CDMA, code division, multiple access, okay, but we are not cover here. Have you heard of Hash Company? The telephone Hash Company? That is, I think it's no more. Um, have, have, have you heard? When there used to be like AIS and then DTAC and then Hash. Have you heard of it? Okay, hash use another technique called CDMA, code division multiple access. Okay, but since we are not using it right now, okay, um, I I am not putting it in a sheet. Okay, you can come and ask if you want. Okay, anyway, so so there are many ways to do the multiple access. For frequency division multiple access, okay, we will have um, different uplink frequency for each of the user. Suppose you have a base station, okay one base station and many subscriber stations. So this may be the mobile phone or it may be the um, notebook, okay, or satellite networks, okay. I already changed, correct the typo here, okay, there's no M here. I update the file on the, um, on MaxLearn already, okay, but I cannot get connect into the Wi-Fi. So, so this is the old version, okay, but the one that is correct um, is in the max learn. Okay, now the base station we assign different bandwidths. Okay, so this is called uplink. S1 use this uplink frequency to upload its own data. For example, it may send the image, upload an image. Okay, to the base station. Okay, S2, S3 also use different uplink frequency. And between uplink frequency, there, there is guard band. Okay, guard band is to prevent the spelling, spelling of um, the spectrum, okay, between the two frequency band. Um, for the dialing, okay, you have only one common dialing frequency. That is from base station to every subscribers, okay. So only one dialing and many uplink, um, many uplink uh, frequency band. Each of the band is for one user. For the guard band, okay, you can see that um, this is the frequency axis, okay. So if you draw it like this, this is the frequency, okay. And if you have a, a channel, okay. So this is the guard band, okay, the guard band. So suppose this is channel one, channel two, channel three, okay, um, okay, and this may be the dialing, okay. So if you send a spectrum, okay, if you don't have a guard band, if it's um, the guard band is zero, you see that it is possible that there's some spill, spillage over, okay, from this. Channel to this channel is will become interference, okay, between two channels. So, but if you have guard band, it will not uh, interfere with the other channel. The spectrum will not interfere, okay. So that's why we have um, the guard band here. Now let's look at the characteristic of the FDMA, okay. 
each day each sub channel is used by only one single station. So it's assigned that this frequency is for station A, this station this frequency is for station B. So when the base station received the information, it will look which frequency it comes from. If it's the frequency for user user two, number two, okay, then the base station will know that, oh okay. This comes from user number two. It doesn't have to identify user number two because it's already agreed that user number two will use this sub-channel frequency band. So look at the frequency that it received. If you know who sent it, okay? Because it's like like if I give a uh, pressure upon one frequency band, give another frequency band, right? So when when I see, if I'm at a base station and I see the frequency band, the frequency that I receive, I will know from the frequency who is sending to me, okay? So that is um, how we do it, okay? But if the station does not use it, suppose you have nothing to send, no one else can send that because it's already agreed that this frequency is only for this, per, this um, subscriber, okay? So you have a problem. Okay, capacity of the channel is wasted if no if the station does not use it. Okay, so similar to the synchronous TDM, it's less complex. If TDM is less complex than the TDMA because the TDMA has involved with the time. Okay, so you have to be like exact, right? That okay, you speak for a minute. You speak for a minute, like the example last time. So if you look at the time, you know who is speaking. But if you speak and you don't keep the time, right? If you speak more than your slot, then you have a problem, right? It means that you are not synchronized, okay? You don't keep the time. If you have only one minute, you have to not talk over one minute, right? And also your clock has to be synchronized. So everyone's clock has to be synchronized for the TDM, remember? TDM, if everyone has to speak one minute, nine, uh, one o'clock and one minute, two one o'clock and two minutes. So everyone has to have the same clock because the next person will start at one o'clock and two minutes to one o'clock and three minutes, right? So if your clock are not the same, if your clock is too fast compared to your friend, you will have a problem. Maybe you start talking before she ends, okay? The other person ends, okay? So, so the TDMA is more complex because it has to involve with the time, timing, okay? And the synchronization, okay? Um, and also got banned to prevent the interference, okay? Now let's look at the, uh, we'll just go over it a little bit, okay? TDMA, TDMA is more of a digital signal, FDMA is more of an analog signal, okay? So TDMA is uh, kind of digital signal. Uh, we use, this one we use one uplink frequency band and one downlink frequency band. However, we will sh divide uh, the frequency in two time slots, okay? So we, sorry, we will divide the, um, the time into time slot. So in this case, we will have, okay, time slot for user one, two, three, and then repeat again. One, two, three, one, two, three, like this, if you have three users. If you have five users, you may, you know, repeat other five, okay? And in between, we have got time, because in practice, you cannot be sure, you know, perfect synchronization is very difficult, okay? So, so you have a cut time a little bit, like this one end at uh, one o'clock and one minute, but the other, you may have a, a cut time of maybe five seconds or 10 seconds, okay? Before the other starts, so that if your clock is not exactly the same, they will not interfere, right? So do you have a cut time here? But we are sending is actually in a very shorter term, right? The shorter time, the one minute um, that I use as an example is like when you are talking, right? Okay, but when we send here, it will be maybe millisecond, okay? So this is the one for uplink and one for downlink, okay? Uplink is uh, the subscriber sending to the base station, downlink is base station sends to the subscriber. Again, I already correct it in the max load, okay? Characteristic of the TDMA, okay, TDMA. Each channel is used by only one single station, so the same thing. If you have no, if uh, 
you set number two is not not sending, then you have a problem. You, you, I mean, you waste the capacity, right? It's not efficient because this will be idle. Okay. Now, for each of the station, the data are transmitted in bursts and not continuously because when you send, you you have to send. For example, user one have to send at this time, right? And then you have to wait for if everyone else to to send before you can send again. So you send like a short burst and you wait for a long time and you send again a short burst. It's like if you take turns speak for one minute. You you speak for one minute, you have to wait for twenty minutes. And then you speak again one minute, right? This is called like sending in burst. Okay, and you have the get data. Any questions on this? This is the end of chapter seven. Just a minute. Um, the next topic that we will talk about is wireless array network. Okay, the wireless wireless array network. Uh, okay, we now we get into the network, right? Um, it's like when you want to send from, for example, you want to have a telephone call, right, um, to anywhere in the world. Okay, so you must have you must have um, kind of a number, and then you must have a switching node okay and you have um, I think I, I taught I, I told you before that if you have a direct line it's not possible because you have too many people okay even in Bangkok there's too many lines if you want um, one to one line okay so what you can do is that you share a network okay and um, you look at how we sharing the network uh, today for the landline, we have the um, we use we, what we call is a circuit switching network. Okay, for the circuit switching network, it's like when you try to call someone, so you have to dial first, right? You dial the number, and then you transfer the information, right? You like you talk, make a conversation, and you disconnection. It's like you hang up. Okay, so that is circuit switching. Okay, and there's another kind. So circuit switching, usually you send like voice signal. So you, you dial up, you talk, and then you disconnect. Now for the, for the next um, 